Hey friends, I'm sure you've heard by now, I know I'm late on this one, but at the beginning of the season, Bungie came out with a $15 starter pack, they tried to pull a fast one on new players, nickel and dime them, squeeze as much money as they can, which later foreshadowed Bungie being in a financial crisis, obviously there were layoffs, but another IGN article came out today, and this spurred me to think, what would a good starter pack look like? And more than that, it would be free every time. Because if I don't say that, someone's jumping in the comment section right now. So yes, these should be free, but what should be in them? Before that, let's talk about the actual value of this and if it is $15. When it comes to pay to win in games, there's always the discussion of are you buying power? Or are you buying an upgrade? When you should also be looking at if you are saving time by purchasing something, depending on your financial situation. So a lot of the Destiny community lets this one slide. An example of this is the campaign boost where you're allowed to skip the five hour Lightfall campaign on follow-up characters. So if you play all three characters, you are saving five hours by spending 2,000 silver or around $20. I believe the exchange rate is 100 silver to one American dollar. So now allow me to do some napkin math with very little editing. I just want to get the idea out there, I don't want to make it look pretty. How much does an exotic weapon cost to get in-game? In the case of Ruinous Effigy, one of the three weapons featured, it costs one exotic cipher, 125,000 glimmer, and one ascendant shard. The cipher is a little tricky because a weekly vendor, Zer, stops by once a week and you're able to get one cipher per week. There are a couple workarounds, like the Season Pass, as well as a couple other bundle packs in the past that give you more ciphers, but don't worry about that for argument's sake, pretend it's not a weekly lockout. So now quickly going to a patrol space and just farming chests and flowers and whatever else gives you glimmer, I made a very quick route and these are the numbers I got for it. I used the proper ghost booster that gave me the most amount of glimmer per public event, per chest, per flower, per whatever. And this is the napkin math. So the route is you load into a patrol space, go in a circle using an eager edge sword or a fast sparrow or something like that, grab all the resources you see, and then reload another area or the same area. And this will yield you about 7,350 glimmer per minute. Anytime a public event pops up, you should do it and make the heroic version and have the proper ghost mods on. And if you combine this with the one minute route, after about 30 minutes of combining that resource route and public events that pop up in between, you're going to have 125,000 Glimmer. Now for the Ascendant Shard, it's not realistic for a new account to get one of these. This is the rarest material for a free account or a new account, I've made both before. My argument here though is that it is still saving time in the long run of an account if they're a completionist or if any of these three exotic weapons offered, Traveler's Chosen, Ruinous Effigy, and Sleeper Simulant, ever become meta viable and potentially save even more time for being the best in slot on a dungeon boss or a raid activity or something like that. So the most obvious way to farm for an Ascendant Shard is to do a Master Nightfall and that would take most teams around 20 minutes. But there is a better and easier way and that's to wait for the Spire of the Watcher dungeon to be farmable that week. Then you do the Ascent encounter and each completion with the loads take about 3 minutes and 30 seconds for a chance at a shard. And that's about a 15 minute average for a single shard. Now we have the exotic cipher from Zur. To unlock it, you grab the quest, then you do 21 ritual activities, which include crucible, strikes, or gambit, and that's gonna take 210 minutes, but that's not really fast. To be fast, you do the exotic mission rotator on hard difficulty, and you do three of those, which take about 45 minutes to do all three. So, that is one hour and 30 minutes for a kiosk exotic, but we also have to factor in the other resource items, which include 125,000 Glimmer, one Ascendant Shard, 50 Enhancement Cores, and one Enhancement Prism. Obviously, you cannot obtain the Sparrow, Ship, and Ghost in game, but I would argue there's a lot better cosmetics that are unlockable in the game, so I'm not really going to mention those. For time value sake, we're just going to call it not a maid dress, because that's what I would spend my silver on if I had the opportunity to. So now that we've done all the math, these are the results. An hour and 30 minutes per exotic weapon. We know that the cosmetics are not a maid dress. Saves you 30 minutes on the glimmer, 15 minutes on the ascendant shard, 20 minutes on the cores, and why is there even an enhancement prism there? Why? Who thought of this? How did this even make it through? 
it's no surprise how much negative criticism this got. DMG, former community manager of Destiny, brought up a really good point. They have made, not starter packs, but exotic bundles in the past that have been similarly priced, and while the reception is still negative, the tone is vastly different. This time, by calling it a starter pack, the implication is it's helping new players, which comes off very deceptive because it doesn't really do that. Every couple of seasons, I make a brand new account to go through the new player experience so I could better answer questions in my Twitch chat to help guide new players towards the most efficient, most fun way to start the game. As far as the most effective free-to-play items to get off the rip, you get a quest for Risk Runner, an exotic SMG that powers up with arc damage, and then for your power weapon, you wait for the gunsmith to sell Taipan, or you get Blowout from the Crucible. That's a rocket launcher. And both of those will do far better than anything offered in this starter pack. Which makes you wonder, when you think about it, this should make you mad. These are supposed to be not influential exotics so that the community doesn't go up in arms about it. Because if they sold something genuinely good, people would say, oh, it's pay to win. But it's the fact that it's just a week enough to make people not be mad about it. That should make you more mad. Now, if it was free, nobody would be mad at all. In fact, it would be kind of a decent starter pack. But the kicker is, Bungie has already done this before. They did it for free, and they did it better. It's called... Gift of the Thunder Gods. On my free-to-play accounts, I could get Thunderlord and a Ark-themed exotic, along with a bunch of legendary weapons and a full set of legendary armor. Now that's what the hell I'm talking about. That is actually helpful for new players, especially Thunderlord, considering it does a champion mechanic, which new players are locked out of until they rank up the artifact, or obtain other exotics like it. For argument's sake, let's say that this starter pack sold was called something else entirely. Would the Destiny community be mad at it? I don't think they would. Maybe a couple would be disappointed, just like we have mentioned how the character boost for the Lightfall campaign is really stupid, and that should just be something automatically done. But the hard pill to swallow for live service games is the lights have to stay on, and that might require something like you see on the screen right now. It might be a Lightfall campaign boost. To an endgame player, though, they should very obviously see the value of playing the game over opening their wallet. And in these cases, for me as an endgame player, I don't need the Lightfall campaign boost and I don't need the starter pack. I will achieve all of those naturally and then more for just playing the game. The best way I can describe this is called consolidation of a bunch of different tasks when you're trying to complete an exotic catalyst, when you're trying to get an exotic a story mission reward or something at the very end when you're trying to manipulate your loot pool to only give one item so you could be more efficient in a dungeon all things like that culminate in me thinking that lightfall boost and starter packs are not worth my money even though in the short term it looks like they might be worth my time i know in the long term they're not worth it at all so i just don't buy them but despite all that being said, it is valuable to somebody out there, somebody who just wants to play a Strand Warlock immediately because they might be like an active duty military and only have a couple hours to play at a time. So of course that's worth it. The reality of live service games is that there's this like song and dance, this fighting game footsies of the consumer versus the developer trying to sell you power versus trying not to have the game be paid to win. And in a lot of cases, where they meet in the middle, muscular arm handshake type thing, is going to be cosmetic items. And when it comes to this and specifically Destiny, I must be the worst type of consumer in Bungie's eyes because I don't really buy anything. The only time I bought any cosmetic was in the 30th anniversary pack, we got a Halo collab and I wanted to use the Halo rocket launcher while gathering footage for all of this. So of course I spent money on that cosmetic. It was for a collab I never thought possible. Now for everything else that has ever released, I have not bought cosmetics in Destiny. So that must be terrible, think about that. I have 9,000 hours on Steam and I have not bought a single cosmetic. And the reason is, is because I have a bunch of the free currency and the secondary reason is they don't make any cosmetics that I actually like. That's the real sad part about this. I want to financially support Bungie, but they just need to get with it in the cosmetic department. And there's definitely other in-game things I would pay for. I would pay for a pro subscription if it gave a variety of services. I would pay for vault space. I'd pay for the ability to change my in-game name or to have like an 
incognito mode, a streamer mode, that type of thing. Oh, I'd pay so much for that. And I'm only going on this side tangent to say that when the live service revenue is doing good, they're more opt to be generous. Generous, like Gift of the Thunder Gods, where they onboard more free-to-play players with a genuinely good starter pack. When Bungie gets it right, it does turn into a well-oiled machine. Good starter pack and good player onboarding equals more potential customers to buy more microtransactions, which increases revenue, which allows them to spend money on making more generous and better player onboarding. I feel like that's the critical point Bungie forgets sometimes. You have to spend some money to buy some player faith so that players want to buy cosmetics and support the game. I am trying my best. They just need to come out with a wizard hat and a maid outfit, and I'm not going through that tangent again. But they should focus on some starter packs for real, for real, to earn back some of that player trust. And here are some of my suggestions. We have Keitel's Christmas Contribution. I don't know, the alliteration work there. It gives you Grand Overture and Skyburner's Oath Exotics, and those are very valuable for being able to have good coverage in the endgame. And then we also have Gift of the Thunder Gods too, which brings back Thunderlord, but also adds symmetry. And of course, between both of these, you get a bunch of legendary weapons. And of course, exotic armor that kind of fits the theme of either the Cabal or the Thunder Gods. Obviously, that would have been a much better starter pack for new players, and I wish they went this route. So now, instead of making a good starter pack for free, they might have to do an apology pack for free. So, good luck, Bungie. I know that the financial situation is really tough right now with Sony takeover around the corner and whatnot, but I'm not talking about that in this video. I really just wanted to talk to my audience to be a little bit more critical on exactly what we're buying when it comes to the games that we enjoy. So vote with your feet. If you're not liking Destiny, you can always play something else. Or if you're loving Destiny, maybe one day they'll have something you might want to spend your cosmetic money on. Maybe they'll sell something you actually want to buy. Who knows?